Sanjeev, Chakri, great to have you here today. As chairman and CEO of O9, you have a direct view on the state of digital transformation in hundreds of global organizations across industry verticals. On top of that, you bring a unique perspective from years of experience of pioneering innovative solutions into our market space. Through that, you have realized significant value and are at the forefront of innovation through AI that will transform enterprise planning and decision making. I would love to delve into that with you today, but before we do that, I would like to reflect. So if we look back at the past year, can you share your insights into the lessons learned that you've gained from driving these implementations? Thanks, Mitch. And it's a pleasure to be here with you, Sanjeev, today. One of the most exciting things for me from last year was the value realization that clients across the board, across industry verticals are seeing. And one particular story is of real excitement. We had our first client who stated publicly a billion dollars of value realization from the 09 planning transformation, right? That's a milestone to be celebrated. This is T-Mobile, which rolled out our planning platform for end-to-end -end planning of its infrastructure. Uh, it's a complex uh, network business. And with by accelerating the rollout, by reducing inventory, by improving the uh, productivity and reducing cost of goods, a billion dollars has been realized over a three-year time frame. So that's a big milestone, something to be celebrated. And why it is the case is for us, for me and Sanjeev, for the longest time, we have always held the belief that planning, integrated planning, transforming how companies make decisions is the high, biggest value creation opportunity. And we are seeing that come to life now. And not just in T-Mobile, but across industry verticals. For example, HP Enterprise, right? They're powering the cloud infrastructure of many uh, global companies uh, uh, across the world. And they have rolled out the O9 integrated planning platform. And through the capabilities that we have delivered, they have now become much more responsive to, the, to their marketplace. They're able to respond to uh, deals and quotes, you know, higher volume of deals and quotes in much lesser time with much greater precision on, 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 based on availability of parts and shape demand, et cetera, which is significant value unlock. Similarly, clients like ABI, clients like Pepsi, clients in the automotive industry like Marelli, they're all realizing hundreds of millions of dollars of value proposition and combined across the O9 client base, that adds into billions of dollars of value. And so this realization that planning is an extremely important uh, category of uh, value creation for enterprises, the fact that it's happening at board levels, happening at CXO levels, is really, really exciting to me. Totally agree that uh, last year was unprecedented in several ways. Uh, some of the ways you pointed out, particularly the value delivered at T-Mobile, but I'm looking at several announcements and putting together the total value delivered across customers. It's very significant, probably exceeds uh, the billion dollars at T-Mobile by quite a bit. And uh, super grateful to the customers, uh, to uh, O9 teams, our partners, and everyone in the ecosystem who really made that happen. Again, to kind of double click on your point, executive involvement, I've seen much greater executive involvement. People, uh, CEOs, board level questions on what's happening on supply chain, more board level presentations where companies are presenting what they're doing in supply chain and uh, integrated planning. And this concept of planning being very important, I think is now seeping through. Is it seeping through enough? No, right? But it's definitely taking momentum. Uh, particularly, Unfortunately, the implementation of various digitization strategies, the upgrade of ERP is taking people just too long. And what you see in our customer base, particularly ones getting a lot of value, is they prioritize planning. And that's a point I want more and more people to understand, that planning, integrated planning, is the most value-producing application you can focus on. You can do it 
as a lead as compared to a follow. I can imagine there is also some challenges in these transformations. Maybe we can touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. So if I look back at last year, right, we had about 70 go lives in global implementations across industry verticals. There's a lot of lessons learned from that, right? There have been uh, successful uh, implementations, you know, smooth implementations, and there have been implementations that have some uh, challenges. And if I look at the, 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 the common patterns across those things, there are companies that handle the complexity of those challenges well that lead to successful implementations, and there are companies that, you know, there are lessons learned on how to handle it better. So let's take data as an example, right? Data challenges are universal. Planning transformations require good data. So you have to solve the data challenges. But there are two ways to approach it. The successful ones, the T-Mobiles, the HP Enterprise that I talked about, they embrace the challenges of data as a challenge. They use the planning transformations to say, we already have data, but there is missing data. And the flexibility of the O9 platform in addressing those kind of challenges embracing the challenges, cleaning the data, capturing all the missing data into the platform so that then we can power the planning. That is the approach that we took. They realized the value. So there are practical ways to overcome the data challenges by leveraging the flexibility of the platform. If you have the right mindset that, for example, you got to go so solve the data problem. You're doing planning today on whatever data you have. Yeah, I think data is unnecessarily scary for many companies. And I'm not saying that all the data you need is available. But as we've said before, and Chakri, you said, you are planning today. You're planning today with the data you have. And there are two paths you can take. One is say, I'll clean up the data further, then start a planning project. We are recommending, and what you found in the customers who are outrageously successful is diving in. You know, the analogy we've always used is a working out analogy, which says, uh, I'm first going to build my muscles, then I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah. You can't do that. You have to go to the gym. And going to the gym here is starting the planning project because planning projects clean up data faster than data projects, period. That's a theorem. We can prove it again and again and again. And some data problems are impossible to detect unless you're doing planning, exactly. right? Like if the data you're feeding a forecasting process is wrong, you forecast. The forecast is wrong. You ask, why was the forecast wrong? You can go back to uh, pinpoint the specific areas of data that require more focus than others, right? So it prioritizes your data cleanup. And uh, so lesson learned was those who dive in uh, to the gym with a planning project succeed, and you'll get there faster. Another, another key challenge that we saw in a lot of cases as we're driving digital transformation, these are, these are complex transformations where lots of capabilities have, can be added over time. But the question is, what is first and what is second and what is third, right? Typically in the past, because of ERP implementations, the experience with digitization, companies have had this mindset that we have to get everything into this box we have only one shot at doing this. Right, I think the mindset is, it's like pouring concrete because historically the systems were so inflexible. The user says, I'm going to ask for my requirements once, I need to get them all. It's like building a house and saying, you know, if I ask for a four bedroom house, I'm going to be stuck with a four bedroom house. And what we are saying and what our customers are realizing is that the software is much more flexible. You can build a four bedroom house, and if you need to extend it to five bedrooms, you can later. So don't fret too much over it, right? Let's get to value fast, and you can change based on the flexibility of modern platforms like O9. And then the third, I think, very, very important lesson is in terms of executive involvement, they all realize that there's a huge amount of value to be realized, but fewer companies are good at really measuring the value and telling the stories around the value as a way of accelerating the adoption within the company and support within the company, right? And so, so the, the case studies that we are talking about that were really successful, I think they made it a point to, to baseline it, 
tell the stories of value creation, where ways of working are improving, where the capabilities are actually delivering incremental value. So it's very, very important for, for executives especially to demand measurement, but also telling the stories of value creation. And we see that as a critical success factor, that companies that do it well versus companies that uh, you know, uh, struggle with the transformations uh, that we need to change going forward. One thing to add there, there's a catch-22, and we see two kinds of organizations, right? Particularly post-COVID, where there was a big shock, huge amount of variability, uh, demand up in some areas, demand down in some areas, et cetera. Some companies decided that this is a big problem that needs attention, and we need better systems. Others are still caught in the cycle of firefighting, that means their best experts are going towards delivering today, uh, the next quarter and the next quarter, and solving planning problems. They are solving plan planning problems. They're intense planning problems. And the idea is how to re remove that resource and commit such that you're not in that perpetual cycle of fighting the planning fires. Yeah, on that point, Sanjeev, I think the, uh, you brought up a great point. And the companies that are driving value from planning transformations are freeing up resources from short-term decision-making uh, towards more uh, uh, critical decision-making in the mid to long-term horizon, right? So for example, uh, clients like ABI uh, and you know, some of our clients, like older clients like Asian Paints, they are starting to measure this key metric we're calling touchless. So the objective is what percentage of forecasts, what percentage of orders are actually being touched after the system is generating those things. And in the shorter, shorter term horizon, the touchless KPI needs to start approaching closer to 100%. They started at 60, they're trending towards 70, 80%. And to your point of earlier point, the post game analysis, if you're not, if, it's, if someone is touching it, you need to do a post game on why so that it becomes more and more automated. So I think that's an extremely important trajectory that planning transformations are moving. We need to free up time and productivity of planning organizations from short-term decision-making that needs to be more automated. Then the mid to long-term decision-making, which is where the big decisions are, you know, where to add capacity, how much risk is in the demand, you know, where to take risk in the supply chain. Those are bigger scenario planning decisions that planning organizations can then focus on with hyper-automation in, in the short term. Right. There's one more point I want to add that's a little obtuse to what we're talking about, but I think super important. One of the transitions I'm seeing, and it's kind of a lesson learned for me and hopefully the entire industry, is there's this, there used to be the strong belief that flexibility means complexity. What we're proving is flexibility means value, and flexibility doesn't mean increased complexity because we can templatize. Uh, we can make it easy to implement if a template works for you. But if $400 million of value is attached to getting a certain kind of capability, you don't want to be stuck to a standard product, right? And that mixture, I think, that we are delivering, the capability of delivering something standard fast for those who can do with it, but providing the flexibility for those who need it, I think that message is being understood, particularly by the consulting field around us, where they're understanding that and uh, betting on the power of that, the power of which is delivering the value that Chakri, you talked about. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Sanjeev. There's all, often a lot of confusion about flexibility. If I might use a couple of examples to illustrate the point you said, right? For example, at ABI, when we got into the implementation, and we were close to going live, we realized the capacity data for all their packaging lines was just not good enough in the, in the existing system. A lot of it is actually in spreadsheets. So there was two ways to go about it, right? We could delay the project, go, go hey, fix the uh, capacity data, take all your spreadsheets, put a new project, which would have delayed the project. But we use the 09 system platform to model all that capacity master data, capacity line data in a flexible way, got the system live, and now that's become the system of record. So this is an example of, to your earlier point, you, you don't know where you need the flexibility. Exactly. Not everyone 
can is a cookie cutter situation. Everyone has legacy applications. Everyone is in a different state of transformation. It's absolutely critical in those areas. You don't need flexibility to reinvent the wheel. Of course, that's where the templatization, the standard capabilities are. But this notion of flexibility is extremely key. And then the second point, as an example, is the flexibility to evolve, right? Because you don't know how things are going to evolve. So based on, for example, at Pepsi, we built the integrated planning system. It was a, you know, uh, bringing commercial sales, uh, supply chain, and finance into an integrated business planning process itself was a big, big jump from having siloed uh, planning processes for that. But once they saw that, the flexibility required was came into bear where now they said, okay, can I add ESG data to this? Can I, along with financial KPIs in my integrated business planning meetings, report on impact on sustainability KPIs? Well, that's the flexibility of the platform because we realize the same data you have for modeling the supply chain can be attributed with other data. So it's not a big lift, a separate project. It is flexibility to uh, extend. So this notion of flexibility needs to be really understood. We think it is fundamental. And platforms that don't have that will not get the value. In, in, and it's been proven out. But again, there's a lot of fear of flexibility because of this nuance that I, I just discussed. And we need to do a better job of educating the market as well. Jockey, I would actually like to build on your point of bringing other functions and other areas into the planning process. I know 9 has always had the vision of truly integrated business planning. Can you reflect on the progress of that and where, they, where you see that going? Yeah, I think it's pretty exciting. If we think of, just to build on the O9 vision that you talked about, our vision, Sanjeev, from day one of when we started O9, we saw the integrated planning. Planning is the process of decision making. There's thousands and hundreds of thousands of decisions being made in the company across the board, right? So commercial decisions on new products, pricing, marketing. Uh, supply chain decisions on where to make, how much to make, uh, what to build, what, what material, uh, financial decisions on how to allocate resources. These are all decisions that are highly interconnected, right? But they're all happening in silos. So we built the platform for that, but practically we had to go about the problem in you know, solving it where the clients were, right? So we started with demand planning, supply planning, integrated business planning. But I'm really glad to report that more and more clients, after adopting the platform, have seen the ability to connect. Uh, wherever we have done demand planning and supply planning and IBP, we are bringing the commercial planning aspect of uh, planning into the uh, organization. Right. So this is the chief commercial officer, the chief revenue officer. They have a commercial plan that has a big impact on the demand forecast that the supply chain has to drive. So it's not, it's not outside. It becomes part of the integrated business planning process. So now you can do cross-functional scenario analysis that says, if we pull these commercial levers, what is the impact on financials, but also can the supply chain support it? Right? That's the kind of workflows that we're enabling at uh, Pepsi, et cetera. If you take companies like ABI, we are moving from daily deployment planning on what product should be moved from what store, uh, from what factory to what DC, or from what DC to what uh, central DC to RDC, in response to very, very short-term demand changes because of weather patterns and things like that, to all the way to long-range capacity planning, what capacity to add today for three years down the line, all being powered on one platform. And this is a validation in a lot of ways of our, our the enterprise graph technology that we had bought to the market, number of clients that have implemented the core have started moving in that direction, Sanjeev. And it's, you know, it's been always our dream. And it's, uh, I'm seeing that in the next three, four years, more and more of that value being realized because of that. Yeah, totally. You know, the value of integrated business planning, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see it. And that uh, value wasn't, that idea wasn't lost on executives. So why didn't we do it, right? Or why didn't people do it? It was technical difficulty. And that's what we solved with the enterprise knowledge graph. We build one knowledge model across the enterprise because what knowledge are we talking about? Knowledge of the customer, knowledge of the marketplace, knowledge about features and how they relate to what customers want. All that is there. 
It's the tribal knowledge that's represented in the enterprise graph. Yeah, and I think uh, as uh, the, the early adopters have already started expanding. So for example, one of the holy grail, Sanjeev, uh, that I'm really excited about is the extending the planning to the suppliers, and in fact, the multi-tier suppliers, right? It's always been the dream of supply chain planning. Uh, uh, and my dream. <laughs> exactly, right? So, but there are, there are a lot of practical challenges for a long time, technology, sharing of information, et cetera. But I think mo movements like sustainability, et cetera, are increasing the, the propensity totally. of suppliers totally. to share because there is a common uh, benefit as well and the technology is making it uh, simpler. So one of the most exciting extensions that we are excited about is now more and more of our clients who have done supply planning on, uh, uh, we are essentially creating the procurement plans for, for billions of dollars of uh, direct material. Well, extending those plans into the multi-tier supply chain network, collaborating with the multi-tier supply chain network, identifying risks in the multi-tier supply chain network faster, then connecting back to hey, what demand can we support, how to shape demand. That vision that has always been there is now becoming reality. So that's an important extension. It's long-term relationships, it is forecasts, it's plans, it's early visibility. It's all about collaboration. And now with clients like uh, ABI extending to direct collaboration, clients like Toyota uh, who are embracing our collaboration platform to collaborate with suppliers, it's really exciting in that area as well. Exciting indeed. And it sounds like we're taking a step into the future that you saw at the beginning of 09 as well. And I actually think we have a big audience here today who is also excited about the future when it comes to generative AI. And lots and lots is being said about it. But if we look at generative AI in the light of enterprise planning and decision making, little has actually been said. So can we maybe touch on that? So let me first kind of, kind of build on uh, uh, your, your key question, where it is right now and where do I see the opportunity? We are deep into R&D at 09 in terms of the potential of generative AI. And given the advantages that we've had in the past of being an AI company, the enterprise knowledge graph being fundamental to representing the, the, the decision-making processes across the enterprise, the, all the structured data, we think we have some unique advantages that we are seeing some game-changing results. So I'm really, really excited about the future, right? So where is the uh, where is that opportunity? So if you think of a simple use case, right? Uh, we call uh, we call it the three W's of planning, right? The three W's of planning. Any plan is understanding what happened and why, looking backwards, right? That's where you learn what's likely to happen and what actions to take. What's likely to happen happen is predict the future whether it's forecasting, demand supply match, and then what actions to take is scenario planning to close the gap, right? I want to improve the plan. In each of those, if we look at the potential of AI and generative AI, 80% of the activities that are being done in each of those are still very, uh, what I would call tribal knowledge driven, right? So what happened last week? Why did we miss the forecast? Well, the systems today can put together some of the data. I can bring the forecast, the actuals, a little bit of the driver data. But to answer that question, you still need a lot of tribal knowledge to come together and say, oh, that competitor did this, weather happened here, supply did not come through here. All that tribal knowledge is not getting back into the system. And that's cycles of learning. So next time the same thing happens, you have the same issue again, right? You are still dependent on tribal knowledge. What LLMs have proven is ability to take the entire written universe of knowledge, so to speak, right, and, and digitize it. So the ability to digitize what I call tribal knowledge into digital knowledge is, we think, the fundamental opportunity uh, because digital knowledge by its nature doesn't get dissipated. Tribal knowledge in most organizations, you know, with people moving on, dots not getting connected is always dissipated. So it's a huge opportunity that we see and maybe Sanjeev can expand on it. Right, definitely exciting times. I mean, last year was like electricity was invented. So companies who take advantage of that will definitely get huge competitive advantage 
one area Chakri pointed out, but right, the question uh, happens to be, so why do I want all this digital uh, knowledge? I think the holy grail of optimization, we're getting closer to, right? And what are we trying to optimize? Two things largely in a company, optimizing the operations, which is all the decisions associated with what should I buy, what should I build, what should I price this at, et cetera, what should I promote. Operations excellence moving to operations optimization now becomes more and more possible, facilitated by the uh, digitization of tribal knowledge, which is all the knowledge that's contained in your spreadsheets, uh, in your email, in public knowledge, bringing it together, like Chakri said, with the enterprise knowledge graph, which is O9's unique contribution, and mixing it makes a powerful mix as a basis of optimization, which is that with search engines, et cetera, or optimization engines that we are building, delivers that optimal in operations. But not just that, companies also need uh, excellence and optimization and capability building. What's the capability building? Is building a factory, introducing a new product, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the important capability becomes digitization itself, right? So the use of AI to build your digital capabilities then becomes important. And I do want to comment on Chakri's point of management changes that are obvious and they'll come hand in hand with the digitization. One is shrinking of layers of management. That means any manager who has 10 direct reports could deal with 30 di direct reports with the new capabilities. So there's going to be a shrinking of layers, but most important thing is shrinking of silos. Why did silos exist? Because companies had to break things down into manageable chunks, right? Now, with the modern tools that will come and tools that we are facilitating, and that's the discussion we were having, right? Integrated business planning. You don't need to do revenue planning, collaboration planning, procurement planning, supply planning on different platforms with different teams. You can bring them together and do it better. So silos, we gave you some examples, but all silos are going to start collapsing. So I think it's the golden age of collaboration coming which has been my dream, Chakri's dream, all many O9ers dream. I think a lot of things that we dreamt about are now becoming possible and it's super exciting. And the power of the, the knowledge models is now, those silos can be collapsed because the knowledge can be digitized, which then brings us back to the power of the, the, the decision making with the perfect visibility and the perfect knowledge. So that's the possibility, how far we are from that. We are seeing technically it is possible. There's a lot of change management, a lot of digitization efforts that we still need to go through. But that is, uh, 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 we can safely say in the next five years, dramatic transformations, I think, are coming. Yeah, totally. This is new religion for a lot of people. It is our old religion, which is uh, building more intelligence into the capabilities. And we are all in. <clears throat> Uh, Chakri's all in, I'm all in, our board is all in. And uh, we are interested not just in delivering <clears throat> software that customer uses just to double click on what Chakri said, but use it in our delivery process. Use it in our knowledge sharing process all over. Fantastic. It is clear that we are at an intersection of remarkable innovation, which will transform integrated planning and decision making. Do you have any closing thoughts for our audience? I would highly encourage uh, people to start thinking about and getting educated a lot more about uh, where the future of planning and decision making, which is we still believe is the highest value add uh, category in the enterprise. Where is it going? So there's a call to action in some senses of A, planning and decision making, integrated planning and decision making, the value of it, realize it, embrace it as one of the most transformative initiatives. Second, the future of the enterprise is going to be significantly different. So the faster companies can, uh, can uh, realize how that is, then they can shape their organizations towards that. Right, right. 
Mitch, my answer is always the same, which is the mantra of management excellence, of operations excellence is like Chakri said, the three W's. What is happening and why? What's going to happen and what should I do, right? And that's been our religion, our mantra, and we're delivering on that. The opportunity now is to deliver that at 5X with the new tools, new capabilities coming, and we are all in. And our main message to customers is look at the facts. Planning should be the most valuable player in your digitization system. It provides the value, the facts support it. Dive all over planning, get good at the three W's, and it will help your company, it'll deliver the results, and you can then start accelerating as more and more tools become available. Fantastic. With that, thank you so much for our conversation today, Sanjeev Chakri. We're on to the next conversation where our clients will also be sharing their stories and the value they have been generating. So with that, thank you again for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Sanjeev. You. Thanks.